Greetings, Earthlings. It's the Sound Alchemist here with... Gersh One. <laughs> Today, we're going to be pretending like we're Mark Zuckerberg in another episode of... For the Greater... What? Because that's what he did. Yeah. And this is another... Wait, have, yeah. Uh, this is a video series <laughs> where we answer the questions left by you, the viewer. If you have a question for us, comment down below. Put question in front of your question because we get those questions first. first. Uh, the the Mark Zuckerberg... Uh, my my, my uh, circuit is fried right now. <laughs> uh, it's because you're in the metaverse, that's why. Yes. Uh, this question comes from Vlad the Impaler. Uh, what happens after a space marine loses one of his hearts? Do they get replacements? That question could just be, like, what happens when a space marine loses anything, any type of limb? Mm -hmm. And the answer is bionics. True. For the most part, like, space marines are in combat, like, 24-7, but not really. <laughs> you just see, all you see is, like, space marines in combat. But no, they have a regimented schedule. And if something does happen where they do lose an eye, a limb something of that nature it depends on the apothecary as to what exactly goes down that's true uh it's um depending on the chapter too some mm -hmm. chapters um try their well most chapters are going to try their best to like operate and keep the space marine or the battle brother alive right salvage the wound salvage the uh tissue or organ or appendage that has been you know damaged yeah and also like it depends on like their space marines are really really tough i mean the mm -hmm. fact that they have two hearts is not just because like they have to power such a like uh muscular man but like also <laughs> because uh in the event that one of them fails yes the other one should be able to take uh control for a while i don't think a space marine can live forever with just one heart yeah um but like that's the whole point of the apothecary to like come in and, and say like eventually we're gonna get back to the fortress monastery or the what is it called the fleet oh the yeah the fleet yeah <laughs> <laughs> and then we can put another heart in there or an uh an artificial heart and stuff like that yeah. um but yeah there's no regrowing there's none of that kind of stuff no um if they do lose an arm um, for the most part, I feel like it's all just bionics, like you said. Mm, like, look cool. Right. I think it'd be even cooler to have like a Space Marine captain or something that just doesn't have the arm and refuses bionics. Yeah. Um, I think, no, that was just a fan art. But uh, yeah, there was like, I think there's a homebrew guy who, like a captain that did that. Mm -hmm. he, he didn't have an arm or something like that. Or he might have been a Death Watch captain. I don't yeah. really know, but yeah. Because I think the whole thing is like, there's, space marines are supposed to be the most efficient and the like the best at what they do. And obviously, if you don't have an arm, that's going to reduce your efficiency. Yeah, uh, and there's way around. There's ways around it too within the lore, just because it it is one of those situations of like, there's pride and honor within a space marine. So like, showing the pride that like, even though I have only one arm, I can still operate mm -hmm. in this way. But no, I think you're right. Like most space marines are drilled with the concept of like you need to be at your utmost uh, efficiency, mm -hmm. and obviously if you're missing an arm, you can't. not gonna happen. Right, unless you're part of like the Iron Hands, where it's like, oh no, I got a splinter. Cut that finger off. Yeah. <laughs> put a, put a robot finger on. Oh, you sneezed. <laughs> New lungs. Yeah. COVID. <laughs> uh, good question though. Yeah. Uh, next question. This one is by. Anath Ardiliar. If a gene stealer possesses an orc, will it still have wah energy, or will the shooter it was using suddenly stop working? More than likely, it's gonna have some type of wah energy, and the reason I say that is because um, when gene stealers infect, um, um, what is it called, imperial planets, there are psychic gene stealer uh, cultists. Mm -hmm. What are they called? Initiates. No, uh, the the psychic ones. Oh, um... But, ba but basically what I'm trying to say is, like, the Gene Stealer absorbs... Or the Gene Stealer hybrid is still partially mutant, mm -hmm. or partially has that, like, connection to the warp, and that's what WOG energy is. So, yeah. I still... I, I think it's a dude with a cloak. The miniature is, like, a dude with a cloak. Though. Oh, yeah. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. Um, but the thing is, there's probably not enough time to actually investigate or find out. Because like, when orcs detect a difference, they're going to start crumping. Oh, yeah. They crump them real hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're going to be like breaking and stuff. Yeah. Speaking about um, orcs being possessed, Chaos16Boy says, 
Can Imperial citizens move to another planet freely, or do they have to get approved by the Imperium? They have to be approved by their planetary governor. governor. So the really cool thing, or not cool thing, but like the <laughs> thing about the Imperium is that each planet has its own autonomy to a certain extent. They, they are connected to the Imperium in that they pay tithes, which is just like taxes, but then those taxes can be manpower, uh, anything, really, mm -hmm. like food, whatever. Um, it's the planetary governor who decides how the planet is ruled. So if you get a really cool planetary governor, which you probably won't, but like, let's say you're trying to homebrew, you could have like a really badass, like Bernie Sanders style <laughs> planetary governor whose socialism is amazing. Uh, and then he might put, uh, like he might give you that freedom to like freely move about between like high planets and stuff like that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. But for the most part, no. Yeah, it's it also depends on the type of planet. I don't know if you mentioned that or not. Yeah, yeah. Because feudal planets, like they're still like doing horse-drawn <laughs> buggies yeah. and stuff. And then you have planets that are literally like futuristic, where everybody has a ship. Where like if you wanted to, and you have like strong enough thrusters, you probably could go off-world. Yeah. But there's you know defense satellites and stuff like that. So. Yeah, and I think like if you're home brewing, like let's say you're you're trying to create a a dark heresy uh, game, and you want to create a scenario kind of like Star Wars, where like um, the Mandalorian can like leave the planet whenever he wants because he has that badass ship. What's it called? The black the badass ship. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> in forty k, you Razor can, Crest. Razor Crest. Yeah. There you go. Uh, you can do that in forty k. You you would just have to elevate the individual not just to like some mercenary but to an actual like rogue trader or somebody of highborn mm -hmm. uh, and that's the thing about 40k and the 40k lore is that the people doing work are not normal people these people are like they come from a, they come from privilege yeah it's rare for these type of individuals to exist. Yeah, and that privilege doesn't necessarily mean money. That privilege could also mean like uh, military backgrounds, connections to the Inquisition, connections to a planetary governor, things like that. Right, they could be born psychers, yep. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And we got to think about just like, maybe there's about like, you know, a handful of people on a planet when this, that planet has like billions of, you know, quadrillions of humans yeah like just it's crazy how many people fit in a hive world it's 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 insane mm -hmm. good question though this next question is by simon teese if the horus heresy had not happened how would the 40k galaxy look like now more akin to i think the um tau empire in that like progress mm -hmm. Technology would be at the forefront because the emperor was all about the imperial truth. Yes. Pushing uh, down religion. religion. And I think, like, you have all the Primarchs loyal. I would, I would assume that would happen unless they did become chaotic and then just decided not to attack the Imperium. Um, or they would just run away. I feel like yeah. some of them, especially like Conrad Kurz, uh, Perturabo, at at some point, they would be like, you know what, the Great Crusade isn't for me anymore. Or it's over, and mm -hmm. now I'm just going to, like, venture off into the void or venture off into, like, what are they called? The Rim Planets? Uh, they have the Ghoul Stars? Yeah, the Ghoul Stars. Yeah, like, go into the Ghoul Stars or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. The other thing, too, is, like, would they even still be alive? Because, like, their whole purpose was to unite the Imperium. And if the Great Crusade was successful, their purpose would be done. Yeah, that's a whole other element to, like, maybe they would have gotten the Thunder Warrior job and just, like, whoosh, yeah. cut as soon as the, the Dark Crusade or the uh, Great Crusade ended. Mm -hmm. but yeah. So, but yeah, it would definitely be a stronger Imperium-controlled, you know, 40K universe. Yeah, a fun one. So, sadly, <laughs> Horus, sadly. Horus destroyed everything, Magnus did nothing wrong, and the one to blame is Erebus. Or Corferon. Mm-hmm. Both. <laughs> like, I, I say more so Erebus, in my opinion. He's the one with the tattoos, right? Yeah. yeah that's not even his name. <laughs> uh, next question comes from the big one. How does Gersh keep his beard so smooth and well-groomed? Ancient Chinese secrets or perhaps the tears of thousands of underprivileged gypsy orphans? Oh, fuck. They're on to me. <laughs> I must know. My beard is not... Um, very smooth at all it's actually a prickly and white hairs are growing so um but editing it changes all that yeah <laughs> contrast smoke and mirrors yeah um next question this one is by living metal 
What do you guys think if GW brought out a tabletop game of the War in Heaven? How would it work if you guys were in charge of it? That's Ooh. interesting. That's also a really, really, like, <laughs> question that, like, you want to sit down. Right, and, and, like, ponder it. Yeah. Because you can't make it, like, Kill Team, because it was more of, like, a grander scale. It's almost epic scale. Yeah, almost to the point where, like, Apocalypse would almost do it, but then, like you said, epic. But I don't like using little tiny things i know but you would have to because like i think there would because the point of the war in heaven is that it was the, in literal heaven mm -hmm. like it was in the stars yeah so like you would have to have a it would be really cool is if if you can create a board maybe like a four by four board and then a two by two on the side where the two by two is uh the the battle happening in the sky with like I forget what the game is. Oh, Battlefleet? Yeah. Gothic? With the planes and stuff? Yeah. Or no, not the planes, the ships. Oh, yeah. So to have something like that, that and that whatever happens in the, in the in space, in the heavens, influences the 4x4 four four tabletop. Um, but then again, like it's a 4x4 four, four four tabletop, so how many like big-ass units can you fit? That, that is true. Unless you go epic. Right. But And then instead of having like a squad of like five guys, you have a squad of five like battleships. Yeah. Uh, that would be really cool. And yeah, like playing Necrons, Monoliths, and all that kind of stuff. It would be really fun to play around with what the old ones would be. Mm -hmm. Because the rumor is, or not the rumor, but the, like, the lore is that like the old ones might have not just been one race. Multiple races. Yeah, that all of them kind of interacted with each other. Uh, so it would be fun to play around with that. Maybe do some Slan, Rat Goal, like yeah, cause really when play you, with it. Because when you think about the War in Heaven, it's pretty much like the Necron tier against the old ones. Yeah. And like if it's just two races, like yeah, it, it won't be, yeah, it'll be boring and there won't be much to do unless it's like a smaller scale, like skirmish -y type game. Yeah, and it's, it would be fun to include like Eldar Orcs or Krork back mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. That would be kind of cool. Yeah, because you got to branch off from like the main ones. Yeah, but then again, like it's still like the Necrons versus everyone else. So yeah. I think that's that would be kind of suck. But you also have the various uh, Catan. Yeah. So you don't just have like the Void Dragon, the Nightbringer, and the Deceiver. Now you have like a slew of them. Yeah, it's true. I do feel like the Necrons would end up being the Imperium, though. Mm -hmm. In terms of like GW pays so much attention to everything Imperium. In 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 a in a war uh, in heaven, everybody would pay attention, or the Imperial GW would pay attention to the Necrons. Right. Good question, though. Yeah. I wish, like, I could already see, like, there, there could be, like, scenario cards where, like, oh, no, the enslavers come out of the warp and start yeah, doing that. <laughs> That's called the uh, yes. Uncle Frank. <laughs> what do you say? Here? Right, but it's the enslaver play. Oh, okay. Wink, wink. Um, but, yeah. yeah. Those are the questions for today. If you guys have more questions for us, please comment down below. Thank you so much for hanging out with us. And if you can come up with whatever the enslaver plague <laughs> would be, let us know in the comment section below. And if you don't know what we're talking about in a previous episode, we talked about the rusty trombone. What would the enslaver plague be? <laughs> right. Innuendos. Yes. Sound Alchemist. Gershwan. And we are out. <laughs>